This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Deco here. Welcome back to Essentially Deco, my fragrant bunker. So today we are going to be talking top five perfumes, my top five perfumes for the month of January 2022. So this is the first list that I'm compiling this year. It's the first list that we get for 2022 because it is January. So before we get to the list and the reasoning behind it, two things I want to tell you. One thing, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, second thing, you can also subscribe to my main channel where I live stream every Saturday. And uh, by live streaming every Saturday, you all get an opportunity to also partake in the conversation uh, as I review the, the fragrances and we talk about the perfumes. So um, those are the two things. Uh, let me tell you where it's at. You can support the channel, all of my channels, by joining Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together. Thank you for all my patrons who have already pledged and for all my members who have joined over there on my main channel. So you guys, very fascinating. Uh, speaking of Patreon um, and members, uh, if you join my main channel Patreon membership, I also do a behind the top five perfumes for the month of every month where I go more psychological in depth about every perfume. So that video will be posted after this video, but it will be posted only to tier two members and patrons. So very fascinating how I thought that 2021 would end and everything would be great in 2022. I have had so many changes happen in my life in 2021. I've taken some uh, professional decisions that are super risky, but I wanted to because I felt like the time is right to move on with my life and try, you know, new endeavors. And then 2022 comes along and it's like ooh, crappy beginning of the year, you know, with Facebook and Instagram problems. Like they deleted my Instagram account for no reason, apparently. And just problems of weird things happen. It's just like the energy is it seems like it's not right. Plus the lockdown situation with all the mutants of all of those things that we're not supposed to mention here, that it's becoming more and more dangerous. And it's just like, you feel like everything is caving in more and more. And then in all of this situation in all of this reality, what we do have to make us feel a little bit better are perfumes. Perfumes have gotten me through thick and thin, and they've gotten me through some really hardcore situations. And let me tell you, the first one, kind of the first moment of happiness and joy in this new year was uh, the relatively quick announcement of a perfume release. And then a couple of days later, it got released. Never ever has um, a launch been that well hidden. And I got to say, obsessed. So we got here, number one, Le Rouge. By Chanel. Look at look how much it's like. I'm using this this little booger up, like there's no tomorrow. This thing it's a body fragrance, right? Uh, I have reviewed this one as well, so go check out the review on Essentially Jacob. Um, fascinating fragrance. It was a wonderful surprise. It was like a last minute surprise. I didn't know Chanel was going to release this. They really kept this one a very well hidden secret. So by the, from the moment when I found out about this, which was like around about two weeks ago, and then two weeks later, bam, it was launched. And I was like, wow, Chanel, well done. And of course, it's a brand new perfume. Um, it smells really good and it is invigorating, refreshing, super light. It doesn't last long, just a couple of hours, not even really. Um, but you're supposed to kind of spray it around to just refresh it up and it feels really good. It has that camellia flower in there, the glycerin in there. It kind of feels really good on the skin. It smells super soothing and comforting. This thing is amazing. I wish they would make it in a more concentrated version as well to smell even more intense. Like if you don't want to use it as a body spray, but just as a perfume perfume in a higher dose concentration, I would still buy it. Um, and I got to say this to start the morning, but even to end the day and even to sprinkle it throughout the day is amazing, especially now in winter. 
uh, in January when it's like super cold. This thing gives you that warm, fluffy, fuzzy feeling. It's really, really cool. And it's a great perfume to also layer. So this is a really good one for me to use throughout the day because it doesn't clash with any other perfume. So I can, in fact, if I wanted to, like I just spray this on now, let's say two hours from now, I, I'm in the mood for another perfume because I am mostly at home. So I kind of wear perfumes for myself throughout the day. I spritz a lot of them on and uh, this one is fabulous because, you know, a couple of hours later I can just spray another perfume on top and this one will not be clashing with anything. Really delicious. So we got a little bit of citruses in there, red berries, musk, jasmine, rose, iris, and orange blossom. Really, really, I do believe there's a bit of vanilla in there as well. There's something warm in there that just perfection. Now, the second perfume is when I need an accent, a very strong accent that will last me almost an entire day. And trust you me, this one lasts an entire day. And what, actually, even more. Um, sometimes I like to spray it on before I go to bed. But it's so good in the winter time. I, I got this for my birthday. So I got this in summer. So this is actually the first winter that I'm experiencing this one in its fullest bloom. And it is Fleur Burlesque by Wilhelm Parfumerie. It's an eau de parfum. Um, hold on. I got my hair here blocking the way. This one. Oh, man, is this thing. <laughs> okay. This is just like it looks. It's a it's it's a sunshine in a bottle, okay? It it really is. Um and look at that yellow juice. I, I say this is the niche version of Giorgio Beverly Hills. It, it is different, but it does have the gardenia, it does have that ilang ilang kind of beefy buttery smell in there. It's a floral bomb. It is it's a tease. It is so light and full of sun, like the grayest of days in the coldest of winter of winters, this thing is going to be a ray of light. And uh, it warms the soul. It's not a perfume that makes you feel warm, but it's a perfume that makes you feel like from within, you can heat yourself up and make it through the day. It's just an optimistic, positive, feel-good fragrance. In a, in a good way. It, it's not one of those like, oh, bougie niche. No, 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 no. It, it has a little bit of a, a hoe in there as well. It's so, so, so good. And it the lasting power of this is insane. Insane. And especially if this thing lands on clothing, and it usually does in my case, because I like to spray it on the chest. So it's always on the t-shirt in this area, right? Because it rubs off. On the t-shirt, at least two days. But uh, on the skin, 12 to 20 hours, depending on how hot it is. I've realized that in cold temperatures, this thing lasts much longer on my skin. When it's hot outside, it has slightly shorter longevity. But it's still the longevity is, is ginormous on this one. And it also projects wonderfully. And um, it, it does make you feel like you're kind of in the 80s but more high tech it's like 2022 you know like 80s but with ipads and huge shoulder pads so this one is just a, a must for this depressing end of 2021 and a depressing beginning of 2022 this thing really is a lifesaver for me it just makes me feel happy um speaking of happy where is my other? Oh, here it is. It was hiding. I was like, where is it? Um, and speaking of 80s, there is a need in me, I've noticed, to really travel back in time and, and feel... I know that the 80s were politically also difficult times, you know, the Cold War. Some people say, well, it never really ended the war. But there was a different type of fear. It was more of an innocent type of fear than we have today. But so the 80s for me represent an era of of a certain type of carefree consumerism and the best era for horror movies, really. Well, anyway, here's another uh, 
kind of, well, not another 80s moment because the these other two perfumes are not from the 80s, but this one is. It's Lulu. Lulu is just such a joy. Again, another, this is the current formulation, which I prefer to the 80s. Form yeah, it's one of those rare moments where instances where I tell you, I actually prefer the current formulation to the 80s because <laughs> it's less dark. It's a little bit more soft. Oh. Man, that powderiness. Oh, this one. Lulu. Mm, 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 mm. Cacharel. You don't do your perfumes justice with your reformulations, but you did good on this one. You did good. I love Lulu so, so, so much. And it's such a misconception that people have. Usually they say, oh, Lulu. Oh, I love the old school bottle, uh, the Genie bottle, the OG bottle. This is the OG bottle too. The Genie bottle was always the splash bottle, but also in the 80s, this one came out. This is the spray bottle. This is how it was in the 80s, and this is how it still is. Um, I'm just letting you guys know, if somebody ever tells you like, oh, this is not the original bottle. No, this, of course, they had a different glass back then. It wasn't spray painted. It was actually painted through the glass. It was blue. This one is just a coating. You could scratch it off. But uh, this shape bottle already existed in the 80s as a spray. Back then, most people bought the splash, however, in the genie bottle, so-called the genie bottle. But this little spaceship looking like a Star Wars space, this is quintessential 80s. Look at it. It's like a spaceship traveling through space. Man, I love this stuff. And the current formulation of Lulu makes me feel warm, sophisticated. Again, the shoulder pads are there. This one also has a hooker high heel, a little bit of patent leather, a little bit of latex. And a whole bunch of, of heart. It's so beautiful. This thing is really, really good mood, good vibes. Uh, you see, there's a pattern forming here. I'm selecting all perfumes that pep me up. That tr you know, perfumes that help me break out of that depression mode <laughs> that I'm in uh, in the beginning of this terrible year. And it has been terrible thus far. Let me tell you. Yes, we are in January, but nevertheless, I crave the idea of an ambrosial spring full of success, full of positivity, full of growth, you know, vitality, if you know what I mean. Quelque Fleur is my number four. Um, it's so bizarre. This is the first time ever in my life that my January is filled with incredibly almost, I want to say springy perfumes, but I just, I'm craving them like crazy, crazy. Quelques Fleurs by Oubigan. Oh, it's like a banana paradise. <laughs> Ambrosial, honeysuckled banana paradise. There's something about Quelques Fleurs that just warms my heart. Rara says, I love Quelque Fleur. Yeah, Prof. Melvin, it's Ubigan. Mm -hmm. oh. it, it's ambrosial. It's a nectar of the gods. It really feels like something so elevated and so above of everything else. It's It, it just makes you feel like you're sitting in your Olympus. And uh, and the problems and the sorrows and the terrible struggles of the world that we face on a daily basis, they're all gone. Because this thing just makes you feel like you're running through a meadow, you know, <laughs> naked with your little angel wings attached to your back. And you're like, oh, everything is amazing. It's it's crazy. What a, what a mood. What a mood this thing is. I highly recommend it. Uh, Quelque Fleur to everybody. Uh, it, it's even in its current formulation. I love the current formulation. I really, really love it. And it's not a perfume like for every, every day. But if I really need that extra zhuzh, this one delivers. And it really is helping me out a lot in January. Now we're getting to the last one. Number five. The fifth perfume in this month is... Number 22. I had to put number 22 in because 
I know Chanel is probably not even going to acknowledge the fact that this perfume in this year is celebrating its 100th birthday. Number 22 was released in 1922 and 2022 is the 100th year birthday of number 22. So whether or not Chanel will decide to celebrate it or not, I don't know, but I don't care. I'm going to celebrate it. To me, this perfume means the world. Oh, man. I have the Eau de Toilette. This one is aged nicely. The vanilla in there is turning very dark. People always ask me when that, when I show them this bottle. They're like, Jacob, why is, your, why is it so orange and dark? Well, this is the discontinued Eau de Toilette. But also the Eau de Parfum turns this color if you let it age. So this one has a couple of years on its back. And it's the vanilla in there that darkens with time. And it's... Oh, this one is so ripe. This one is ripe for the picking. That tuberose in there, the lang lang in the, the vanilla, the incense that we find still in the eau de toilette. It, it's just divine. This thing is in many ways, in many ways, way more sophisticated than Chanel Number no. 5, even though it's considered its smaller sister. A little bit unfor unfortunate sister, but in reality, Number 22 has such a punch that number five doesn't have number five is a famous chanel perfume that kind of shows that detachment it's to die for i live for chanel number five this one is one of those i say this in my reviews of number 22 this one shows more heart this one is this one this one dares to show a heart this one dares to love and again highly needed in this year, God knows we need love in this year, uh, in, in our lives in general. But uh, let's just say that 2021 did not deliver. And it kind of feels like 2021 was setting us up for even worse in 2022. So this perfume also kind of gives me comfort. And the fact that it's its 100th birthday gives me hope, you know, that things don't get destroyed with time. Some things do withstand the test of time and are still with us after so many years so this one makes me so happy it's a a lot of people say this is a perfume to get for weddings you know it's like on your special day this is like a wedding perfume but then Kelke Fleur is also a wedding perfume Diana allegedly wore this and spilled it on her wedding dress on the day of her perfume on, on the day of her wedding not on the day of her perfume um this one is also said to be that kind of wedding fragrance, spring fragrance. So you can see all of these spring type of perfumes. I'm using them in the middle of winter. That's just how I feel this year. Like these, these five really hit the spot for me right now. I can't tell you. Like they really hit the spot for me right now. So they, it's as simple as that. And in no particular order, sometimes I would wear this one in the morning, sometimes in the evening, you know, Quelque fleur, mostly in the evening before I go to sleep. Lulu, throughout the whole day. Number one, um, Le Rouge, throughout the whole day. Quelque fleur, not every day. This one, I, this one, because this one is so ambrosial and that nectar is so intense that this one really is a garden of flowers and, and you're in it. You're that little angel floating around. So this one kind of, you isolate yourself in your own bubble when you're wearing this one. So that will be my top five. Let me get to some of your comments. Um, what do you guys uh, ask? Yeah, incense and vanilla, says Vanessa. Love it. Yes, there's incense and vanilla. However, the incense doesn't seem to be present anymore in the current Eau de Parfum formulation. The incense was in the Cologne and in the Eau de Toilette for sure. Um, Vanessa says, 22 is my favorite. I'll get that one and not number one. They're quite different, though. You know, there's kind of no comparison between the two. Uh, Fotini says, number five is both the uh, beauty and the pain of life. It's the whole life. Number 22 is only the beauty of life. Oh, that's a good comparison. It, it, yes. Yes. Number five can also be pain. And number 22 is just the beauty of life without the pain. Uh, Prof. Melvin says, uplifting scents to get through the winter blues. Oh, completely. And I'm not in that type of mood every year. But like this year, it was very much that. Like, okay, I need these sunny, radiant. I, even the way I'm dressing at the moment, I, I'm craving these colors. 
Um, Brockstar says, 22, uh, 22 makes me think of quotes Coco made uh, of cleanliness. What would those be? <laughs> Can you share with us? Rara says, I wear Kelkefleur year round, but I never mind feeling like a garden fairy. LOL. No, I... I don't mind feeling like a garden fairy either. I love it. <laughs> Laura says, do the toilet 22. If I'm not wearing it, I have to smell it out of the bottle every day. I do too. I This one is always next to my bed. Always. All year round. I just sniff and then I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> it, it's, it's that amazing. It really is that amazing. Mm. No, we didn't have any. Ah, Barbara, Barbara Shioka says Chanel 22 is great. Uh -huh. um, Scam 28 says my first perfume was a Trussardi. I don't remember the name. Trussardi had that gorgeous in the 90s, 80s and 90s. They had those. It almost it looked like they had a little leather package surrounding the the actual bottle and looked like leather and brown. Um, Fotini says, have you experienced Aqua di Parma? I like Colonia di Notte di Colonia. Yes, I have tried a couple of their perfumes. They just don't tickle my fancy, though. Amanda says, I have never had a luxury perfume, only drugstore. I have been thinking of investing in a nice one. Um, there are some wonderful drugstore perfumes. Uh, truth be told, Lulu, uh, at the moment, is actually, um, considered a cheapie. It used to be very expensive in the 80s. Uh, when it first came out but now you can get lulu like for 15 dollars 20 dollars depending where you where you where you buy it uh compared to its price in the 80s this thing has become a cheapy but let me tell you man this is good this is so so good oh barbara says i like la pausa too yeah la pausa is really good i also like 28 la pausa which is no longer in production La Pausa is really good, but it's very cold. La Pausa is a cold perfume. And um, right now, yeah, right now it doesn't hit the spot for me. Not this month. Uh, <laughs> Fotini says, yeah, me too. I, need, I just need to smell number 22 every day. Melanie says, 22 has always brought me a certain peace after a stressful day. It's amazing how we all have our stories with number 22. Isn't that fascinating? Because, yeah, I think Chanel should acknowledge it more. I mean, it's brought so much joy and happiness to people. They should celebrate its 100th birthday. Like, to not even acknowledge that would be really lame of them. Alina says, the older perfumes become cheaper with time which is a good thing. Well, not all of them. Uh, opium did not become cheaper. Poison did not become cheaper. Chanel number no. 5, number 22 did not become cheaper. Shalimar did not become cheaper. But other perfumes, sometimes perfumes do become cheaper, like Giorgio Beverly Hills, Obsession, Calvin Klein, Eternity, Calvin Klein, Lulu, Eden, um, Anais, Anais. They all became cheaper. Uh, Cabotin, a lot of them do become cheaper. Letty says, great list. Yesterday I bought Lulu and haven't opened the bottle yet. I've never smelt it before. Now I'm excited to use it. To use it, I paid $20 for 30 mil. Yeah, that, that's that's what I paid too. So for today's perfume standards, this is considered a cheapie. Even though it's still not cheap because it's still $20. But it's not $100. It, it could have been $100 too. You know what I mean? Oh, God, I love Lulu. I really love it so much. Uh, Kimberly says, 22 is such a beauty. Ah, Fotini says, my first perfume was Cacharelle Anais Anais. That's a 70s beauty, isn't it? Um, Laura Sparkles says, what a lovely list, Jacob. I have four of the five, and they are some of my favorites. Thank you so much, Laura. They are really amazing. They really are amazing. Jesus says, La Pausa is a hidden masterpiece. I completely agree. Love it to bits. And I went through several bottles of La Pausa. Let me tell you. Um... LOD or LOD says, Hi, Jacob. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, sweetie. I love number 22. Also would really like to try Quelquefleur. It's amazing. It, it's different than 
any other perfume out there. It really, really is. Even in its current formulation, it's, it's magical in its own way. Jesus says, Lulu or poison? Choose one only. Oh my God. I'm going to say current day formulation, Lulu. Just because poison's tuberose in the dry down has something a bit skanky on me, not in a good way. I like a good skank, but Lulu doesn't. Lulu's dry down is divine. On, on my skin, the tuberose in Lulu works on me, while the tuberose in poison has something slightly screechy in the dry down. I love the opening of Poison, but the dry down doesn't always work on my skin, while Lulu never disappoints in the current formulation. So I, I want to, I, I would have to say Lulu or Lulu. Laura says, what do you think of the uh, Aaron Lauder? Esther, Esther Lauder range, right? They have stolen a little piece of my heart too. Uh, with Esther Lauder, uh, unless you're talking about some brand I don't know. I don't know Aaron Lauder. I think you mean Esther Lauder, right? Um, uh, Youth Do is really good. Uh, I have to say White Linen is also really good. Um, if, if, you're, if we're talking about the same brand, though, <laughs> you know. Uh, Irene, a lovely as usual, says, 1997, I used to love Blonde by Versace, another tuberose bomb. To me, it was and still is the most decadently sweet and sexy perfume. I loved it. I still keep a bottle with a tiny bit. It still is fine. Wonderful perfume and a beautiful bottle. Vanessa says, my mom bought me chow when I had my first boyfriend. <laughs> Fotini says, my dad was a captain. And since I was a girl, he brought me an ace and ace in his suitcase from his travels. <sighs> my dad always used to bring poison to my mom. She hated it. She used it to spray uh, flies with it. Isn't that funny? And he could never get the memo that she didn't really like it. <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, maybe he did know and did it on purpose just to provoke her. Um, yeah, Jesus says, yeah, same. Hard for me to say because I adore Poison, but Lulu is something else. Listen, Poison, I love it. I love Poison out of the bottle, how it smells to die for. Dry down on me doesn't work at the bottom, bottom dry down. But Lulu, the bottle and the dry, they all and out of the bottle. Man, it, come on, you know what I mean. Um, oh, I didn't know Susie Q. Susie Q says Erin Lauder started her own line. Okay, now that's something I need to look into. But Debbie says Erin is overpriced. I, you guys, I got to look into that. Thank you so much for letting me know. This this is really interesting. I have to look into it more. Prof. Melvin says, Wore Eau de Guerlain the other day as a pick-me-up and remind me of spring. Joseph says, I'm back now. What perfumes are we chatting about? Top five for the months of January. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have thumb it up, let me know in the comment section down below which are your favorite perfumes for the month of January. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Thumb up the video and subscribe. Bye.